Okay, so today I want to talk about how to create a modal dialog in Svelte. Now, if you don't know what a modal dialog is, it's basically a dialog or a window that shows on top of other windows and then blocks you from interacting with the other windows, basically the underneath windows. Uh, this is a very common technique where you show uh, this modal dialog uh, appear on top of everything else and then to draw your attention to force you to contend with it, to acknowledge it, and maybe, you know, give some input or close or just uh, read a message and acknowledge and escape. So typical ways of closing in the modal dialog uh, are basically either you cl click the X button on the top right or you click the close button if the model provides it, or sometimes uh, the expectation is you press escape and it disappears. Also, another usage of modal dialog like this is to show images, <coughs> excuse me, inside these uh, modal dialogs. So we'll just do a simple um, HTML based modal dialog and take a look how it works. So let me just first create a project. I'm going to go to my dev Svelte and then I'm going to, you know, do what we always do to create a new um, new Svelte project, and that is npx dig it, right? So I'm going to create this thing called Svelte model. Uh, that's the name of my project, and I'm going to um, what am I doing? I'm cloning this project Svelte.js template from GitHub.com slash Svelte.js slash template. Uh, so I'm I hope you know how to use npx dig it. Um, and that all these things are explained uh, in several of my other videos. Take a look. Okay, let's go. Now that we have a new project, let's open it. And we do that by saying Svelte model. Let's find it. There it is. So that gives me my basic scaffolding for the project. Um, I want to create something that uh, occupies the whole screen. So let's just uh, go into our uh, source code, go to main.js, remove this extra thing that we are not going to use, go into app.js, get rid of this export let name, get rid of most of these things, right? We don't, we don't need any of these things. And uh, what we want to do is we want to show a text area which covers most of the screen, most, not all. And so that we can show a model sitting right on top of it. So let's do this. Uh, we'll say text area. No, none of these things matter. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a style. So let's give it a style. Uh, style. I'll say my text area. is width 100%, height 100VH as in uh, vertical, oh, 100 might be too much, so let's make it 90VH, so which will give it 90% of the viewport height, this one. Okay, and then give it a slightly different background color, so I'm going to give it a background color of uh, pink. All right, let's see if I can get um, this to work. First, I'm going to go to my npm script and run npm install by right clicking and say run install. I could also run, run npm install in the shell, same thing. Let's run the dev script. And now we should see our text area. Look, it's a text area. It's 90% of the height. Now we can give it a button, add a button. The purpose of the test text area is just to occupy most of the most of the available space. So we just create a button and then close that button. And in the button, we will say show model. Okay. And there you go. You got a button called show model. But now, of course, we have to have the model components. So let's create that. So we will create a new file called model.svelte. 
And what this guy does is he simply displays its children slot. So in Svelte, you display a component's ch children by using the slot tag. So here, if I have a mo model, then it will be, oh, first let me import the model. Import model from dot slash model dot svelte. Okay, so this gets you the, the other component, and then we instantiate that component, All right? Inside that, we can put whatever child content we want. So we will say, hmm, um, child content or model content. We can have it, uh, give it a title also. Let's give it a H2 title. Um, okay. Uh, model title. And since this is going to be a child, let's make it a paragraph. Model content. Okay, let's see how it looks. Well, yes, we see model title and model content, but they are showing up right below. And they should show up only when we want to show that model, right? So this is not exactly a model, which is fine. We just got started. So to move, how do we make it a model? First thing is we don't show it in the beginning. and We show it only when uh, it's supposed to be shown, when you click the show model, okay? So the way we will do that is, we will wrap this in an if. Let's create a script tag. Let's export, well, let's create a, a dialog which says uh, shown, not dialog, sorry, boolean, where we say shown is false, right? And then we say if, pound sign if, this is obviously standard swelled, pound sign if shown, is, which is that it's true, and then only show the slot. Very simple. Now, and now you can see this modal title and content disappeared. Now, as soon as I make this shown equal to true, then it shows up. There you go. Well, this is definitely not how a model should actually function. We want to control this uh, model in some way. So how do we control it? Let's create functions function um, show which sets shown to true and another function hide which sets shown to false. If we could manage this, this would be great, right? Now we would like to our show model to show model to control that show and hide. So, well, the button show model on click equal to, and we want to somehow say model dot show, right? Uh, of course, if you are going to do that, you have to make it a Lambda function like this. But of course, uh, we want this variable called model to reference, refer to this component called model. Uh, and in Svelte, the right way to do that is you declare a local variable model. You don't have to initialize it, but you then bind it, bind colon this to model. Now, when you do this, uh, this variable is same as this variable is same as this variable, and actually it will get assigned the reference to this model component when you say bind colon this, okay? Let's see if this works. I click show model and nothing happens. Okay, it nothing happens because a model doesn't have a method called show. At least it's not a method that outsiders can see. So I'm gonna make this export, export function show and export function hide. So these are exported functions. Once you do that, your your call to model.show actually should work. Let's see if it does. Oh, well, yeah, it does. See, when, oh, let me reload. When I click model, only then this model content and title show up, which is great. So it's something is working. Um, the only problem is 
it's not showing as a model. It's showing below. That's where CSS styling comes in. And this is the essence of moda, modal behavior. So I'm going to add a style tag. What we have to do is we have to create two portions. One is the modal content, the other is the modal wrapper. So we have to create, if shown, you want to say div, let's say div dot modal wrapper. So this is the wrapper and then div dot modal. And this is the actual modal content. This contains the content. So let's move the slot inside it. So now you have two of these. The wrapper is what will act as a, as a covering element that covers the entire screen. And then the modal itself will be the thing in the middle that shows and attract attention. So the way we do that is we have to say that modal wrapper has its styles and then dot modal has its own styles. The key thing that makes modal wrapper useful is that it covers entire area, looks a little bit off color uh, and blocks any interaction from anything underneath. So we just say background color RGBA. So we want to say it's black in color, but it has only 60% opacity. Uh, alpha channel is that. And just for uh, to be, in case you are with a very old browser, you should also put a background color before that, which is RGB without the alpha channel. Okay, so you do this, that's one thing. Second thing, very important is, Remember, this modal wrapper is going to cover your entire screen in order to, or viewport rather. In order to do that, we have to say that its position is not relative, but fixed. Now I did try position absolute in the beginning and I realized that then doesn't work as well. Fixed is the best position, okay? Now say position fixed, width has to be 100% and height now height can be 100% or it can be 100 VH. Uh, that is something we have to decide on our own. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm going to make it 100%. Position fixed. Okay, let's see what happens now. So if I click modal, ah, something happened. See, modal showed up right below, but not the way it's, it didn't show up at the very top. So to put it at the top, we have to say top is zero and left is zero. Let's try this again. Ah, something showed up, look. It covers the whole thing and it, it is showing modal title in the middle. So that's good. We, we, are, we are getting to, to the beginning of modal behavior. Now what we have to do is put this model in the center in, in, in a little box by itself. So we say, first the model has a background color, which you can decide whatever you want, but I'll make it white. Okay, all right, so that's one thing. Second thing is it should have some limited boundaries, very clear boundaries. So let's say width, um, I don't know, max width, let's make it max width 80% or 80 VH. Oh, sorry. Um, what is it? Viewport width VW, correct. So max width is this. I can color is that. Then let's give it a little bit of uh, internal padding, padding of one REM root EM whatever EM means. Um, and let's give it a little bit of margin. So margin will be 15% on top and bottom, and then auto, which means center it horizontally and center it. Let's see if, how this looks. Huh, it's pretty good, isn't it? So we got 15% from top, and then 15% from the bottom, that, but that doesn't count because it, it has empty space after that. And then we got, uh, we say 
maximum width is 80 VW, meaning say viewport width, 80% of that is what maximum. So 10% on each side it's leaving. And then, yeah, so overall this looks pretty okay. You can always reduce the width if you want, but and you can control those things a little bit. All right, so now, of course, there is no way to close this. So I, like I said, there are three ways, there should be three ways to close. Uh, one is press escape key. Second is um, provide a little close button. And third is optional, which is, you know, the dialogue itself might provide a close button. So let's start that. So one thing we will do is, uh, let's start with the close button. So what we do is, we say, hey, give a uh, say span of the X button. So which is uh, HTML entity times semicolon. So this will give give a little button. See that times, that, that's the times entity. Now it should be um, floated to the top right. So let's do that. We will just call, you can put it here or you can, I don't know where you, let's say call this, call it class close. And I'm just going to give it class close and then float right. Once you do that, you get, it goes to the right, which is good. It doesn't actually close the dialogue just yet, model yet. So we just say, hey, uh, on, click, call a callback and call hide. That's it. It should work. Let's see. And yeah, it does work. A little bit of more styling. We could just say um, cursor is pointer to make it, you know. Um, and then we could also say that it's a, uh, Upon hover, uh, the font weight becomes bold, just to make it make it a little bolder. So let's see what happens. Show model. When you hover on it, it it highlights itself a little, and the cursor also helps to tell you that you can click it and it will close. So that's great. Uh, so now, but if I click on this and I click outside, it doesn't close, which I don't know if it should, but I'm pressing the escape key repeatedly and it's not doing anything, which of course it cannot because I haven't programmed it. So let's do that. So what we want is the escape key to, key to close this. Okay, so the way you do that is you could try to capture the escape key here, you could say, uh, modal wrapper on key down and then you could say well you could say so e is the event and you say e dot key code is equal to 27 if if this is 27 let's wrap this because it's going to be an if statement let's uh, wrap this all into the function body okay so if key code is 27, which is S, the code for key, uh, for it's the key code for uh, escape key, and uh, then call hide. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, I click, and now I'm pressing escape, and nothing is happening. So this is the issue. Yeah. So I tried this before, and it didn't work. I had to, and I'm not entirely sure why. I have to put this on the window. So you can say swelt colon window and and up attach the same exact um, same exact uh, handler event handler. All right. If I save this now, we should. So look what what I did. I basically said uh, attach a key down event handler on the window. And you can do that with swelt colon window. On key down, e, if e.keycode uh, key is 27, then hide. 
hide what? Of course, it's going to call this hide because that's the one that is in scope. Okay. Right, let's see if this works. Now I'm pressing escape key and it did do the right thing. I'm showing, I'm pressing escape. I'm never, I'm not even clicking that thing on, on top. So that's your uh, model, model dialog behavior, right? So this is exactly what you would want. Um, now the only final thing is we could supply the close button, but I would think that the close button, uh, if only the content of the model wants to supply that, uh, then they should. So which would be, you just supply it within the content, like close, and then you can say on close. And here's the key thing. You basically take this model and call it hide. So be careful, don't call it like this. This doesn't work. It actually calls hide. And then when you are actually, uh, so let me just show you. So if you do this, yeah, it doesn't work because it, it called hide as soon as it was building it. So that's not how it, it, it's supposed to work. Instead, you are supposed to make this the body of a, of a Lambda function of a closure. This is how you're supposed to make it, code it. So now if you click show model and you click close, boom, apparently it still doesn't work. So now I have to find out why that is not working. When I do this, it works. But when I'm clicking this, it's not working. Oh, sorry, my bad. I said on close, I should have said click on click. Yes, sorry. So if I now click model and click close, yeah. So this close works, this close works, and pressing escape key also works. So there you go. That's your modal dialog in Swelt. The key things to remember are that it has, you have to give it a position fixed, top zero, left zero. This is on the wrapper, remember. The wrap, you have to give it a wrapper and the wrapper has to have position fixed, top zero, left zero, width 100%, height 100%. Those are the things that make it possible. If I inspect this now, you will see that this wrapper is, is the key thing. The wrapper is, is what is making everything work. Then of course, inside the wrapper, you have the that dev dialog and that contains the modal content. Now, one more thing you have to keep in mind is sometimes, sometimes you may or may not have to give this a Z index um, of whatever, one or 100 or whatever, something greater than what it's uh, uh, other, other HTML elements on the page contain. Uh, I didn't have to do that. Maybe I will at some point, but right now I don't have, seem to have. So there you go. Click show model, close it through various means or just by clicking, uh, by pressing escape key. So it's very easy to create these kinds of things in plain JavaScript uh, or Svelte, especially in Svelte. Uh, plain JavaScript, you would have to do a little more work, but it's entirely possible. Um, there is less and less need, I guess, for external frameworks if all you want to do is show modal dialogue. Okay. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.